there's very little dispute that processed foods are terrible for you. About the only people who would dispute that are the people who hold to the strange belief that just because a food item is legally able to be bought at the grocery store, that it must be safe and good for you. Yes, there are people who actually believe that the government wouldn't permit Kraft to sell boxed noodle meals that are loaded with chemicals unless they were healthy, unless they were good for you. Yes, such people exist. They're the only ones who really dispute that processed foods are not actually good for you. But what makes them unhealthy? What makes them especially not good for you? Aside from them being almost all carb-based or filled with soy or filled with other filler junk ingredients that are not, that are not pro- part of a proper human diet. Aside from those things that tend to be more the focus of carnivore and keto spaces, what makes them bad for you? It's the artificial ingredients themselves. A lot of the weird mystery chemicals, many of which have been linked to causing cancer at least in animal test subjects, because you can't do these kind of subjects on human beings. But there's evidence that they do have that kind of outcome for human beings as well. So we're just going to go over about half a dozen or so of these ingredients here, because a lot of these things are also in foods that some carnivores or some people in the keto world tend to play fast and loose with. You know, maybe you found yourself backsliding a little bit from on carnivore by you go get some chicken wings from Buffalo Wild Wings. And instead of getting them plain, you get them with some of their weird sauces in them. Their sauces have some of these ingredients in them, I guarantee, because you can go look online at their website and you can look to see what's in these different sauces. Or maybe you drink energy drinks. These ingredients are in them. Or diet sodas. These ingredients are in them. People spend a lot of time arguing vehemently, passionately about whether you should drink coffee on a carnivore diet. Let's focus here, folks. Let's actually focus on keeping it to non-processed clean foods. So let's get into this. The first of these ingredients are artificial yellow dyes, specifically yellow number five and yellow number six. These are commonly found in condiments, cheese, cereals, chips, cookies, and yellow colored drinks. What kind of condiments are going to have these in them? Probably not normal mustard. Because normal mustard is usually mustard seed, water, salt, and vinegar. That's typically what's in mustard. Cheap mustard, whatever. I'm not on team having condiments as part of a carnivore diet, except maybe as a rare treat. But some people are, and I won't judge you for it. You're probably, if you're watching this video, you're probably not eating a lot of cereal, chips, or cookies. But you might be drinking Mountain Dew or some, you know, Competitor to Mountain Dew, which is the most common of the yellow colored soft drinks. And by Mountain Dew, I mean like the diet version, right? Or are you eating cheese? Because cheese, at least in the United States, for whatever reason, is typically dyed yellow, this yellowish, or, yellowish orange color. They are the number, f- t- the yellow five is the second most common, and yellow number six is the third most common used food colorings in processed foods. And there are dozens and dozens of animal studies that show them being linked to increased kidney and intestinal tumors among animals. It's pretty serious stuff. Does that mean it'll have that effect on humans? Not necessarily. Moving on. Number two, of course, are vegetable oils. A lot of space is taken up about vegetable oils in carnivore and community world for good reason. They are extremely inflammatory and they're in pretty much every processed food imaginable, including processed foods you would think they wouldn't be in. These vegetable oils are canola oil, soybean oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, and some people would argue that these are also avocado oil and, and olive oil and a few others. Um, I tend to draw the line to not include olive oil and av- avocado oil there, not because I'm a fan of them. I'm not saying you should eat those on a carnivore diet. I do think they should be avoided too for other reasons. A lot more having to do with the rancid nature of them and like fraud and labeling of avocado oils and other things. But also because if you're doing carnivore, don't eat, don't consume plant-based oils as a general rule. But the reason I focus more on canola, soybean, corn, and sunflower is if you've ever seen how they're made, you wouldn't want to eat them. They're disgusting. They are so highly processed and, and, and injected with so many different chemicals to make them edible. Why would you eat them? Once you see how certain highly processed foods are made, 
You know, it's like the old, how you don't want to see how the sausage is made stuff. How sausage is made is nothing compared to how this stuff is made. Now, these are commonly, these vegetable oils are commonly found in things like peanut butter, which has naturally occurring oils in it. Why would you put oil into peanut butter? Or unless it's extra peanut oil. But it's in peanut butter. Frozen foods, which shouldn't surprise anybody, bread often has these kind of oils in them. Uh, potato chips, salad dressings, margarine, etc. Let me give you the most clear example. The, for whatever reason, the comment I see asked about in carnivore groups the most are mayonnaises and salad dressings. People like to dip their chicken wings in blue cheese. I've been there, know that one, trust me. Or, you know, mayonnaise. People want to have a chicken salad or something. Unless you make the mayonnaise yourself from, like, you can make mayonnaise using bacon grease or tallow. There are plenty of recipes on there out there for how to do that. Unless you make that yourself, mayonnaise you buy is going to be made with canola oil or soybean oil or both. Usually it's the number one ingredient. If there was a hierarchy of inflammatory foods, probably mayonnaise would be near the top of that list simply because most basic mayonnaises you buy are made with that stuff. They are like the first thing I look for. Like when my wife and I are at the store, she does keto. She does not do carnivore. She does keto. I do carnivore. But when we're at the store and we see a new keto item that she's interested in, the first thing I do is when she's asking what I think of it is I look at that label and I look for those vegetable oils. If I see those kind of vegetable oils, I usually put them back. Number, the next one on our happy little list here is sucralose. This is one of the more notorious artificial sweeteners. It's found in diet sodas, again, salad dressings, syrups, and energy drinks. And I'm not really sure why we separate energy drinks from diet sodas, except for the caffeine and the, ener the alleged energy boost uh, chemicals in them. It's an artificial sweetener that is known to cause harm to the good bacteria in your gut. And, you know, when you restrict your diet in the way that people do on carnivore or keto, your gut flora is anyway going to sort of maximize itself for how you're eating. So you, why would you harm that? Why would you go and undermine that by drinking these things? Sucralose can cause, has been known to cause migraines in people or worsen their mood and cause inflammation. Again, we love the sound of zero sugar. Zero sugar is great. I remember three or four years ago now when Pepsi and Coca-Cola started putting out their zero sugar drinks. Actually, Coke Zero has been out for like almost 20 years now, now that I think about it. But Pepsi finally made their own five years ago or something. And I was excited. I don't drink that stuff anymore. Because it's really, you're not doing yourself any favors by drinking that stuff. I understand if you're in like a weaning out phase, you're trying to wean yourself off, more power to you. I hope that works out for you. And if you find that you're achieving your goals with that, with, with, by drinking those things, it's your business. But sucralose and aspartame and those kind of things are bad news. Number five is a controversial one for some people, especially in the barbecue world, weirdly, because this, this ingredient is making a comeback, and that's monosodium, monosodium glutamate. Now, I'm not going to go after MSG for the typical reasons you hear people. Those have been mostly debunked, actually. MSG is a, a food flavor enhancer that sort of helps boost that umami flavor between the sweet and savory side of things, but it blocks your hormonal signaling telling you that you're full, or at least you can contribute to that. Why would you want to do that? Like, seriously, like there's enough problems in the carnivore world with, of, of a fair number of people, including myself, who have a hard time with uh, reading their satiety signaling. Why would you want to make that worse? You're going to find this... MSG commonly in, in soup, again, frozen foods, potato and tortilla chips, in something with that's marked as beef flavoring and fast food. And the place I see it, more than I see it anywhere else, it are in spices, specifically like barbecue rubs. I'm not anti-spice. I will put spices on some things. Like I have a, uh, I'm doing a beef arm roast in my pellet grill right now that I'm doing like a brisket. And I have a little bit of a spice on that in addition to a little bit, uh, in, in addition to enough black pepper to try to get a bark on it because I'm indulging a little bit in it. Normally, I try to limit my spice consumption mode to just a couple times a week. But anytime I see a barbecue rub that looks interesting at the store, I look at the ingredients list and that's what I'm looking for. Are two things there are sugar and MSG. And what, uh, whatever it is I put on there, I don't even remember at this point. 
didn't have either of those on it because I wouldn't keep it in the house if it did. But MSG is, you know, something that you should be cautious about. Is it the end all be all? No. Is this like the 1980s where there were some other reasons people were going after MSG, some very unsavory reasons, we'll say, if you pardon the turn of phrase? No. But this is probably something at the end of the day you should be wary of because it can block your hormonal signal and telling you that you're actually satiated. Back to food colors of the next one, red number three and red 40. This is, these are the most, red 40 is the most used food dye in the United States. And studies suggest that it has caused thyroid tumors in rats. And at one point there was an attempt to ban red number three and uh, red 40 in the United States because they've been banned in the UK and Switzerland. But that never went anywhere. Surprise, surprise. Wonder why it never went anywhere. You can find, commonly find these in cereals, pastries, cocktails, fruit snacks, and yes, condiments. So be careful with those condiments. I have an idea for a condiment video. It would require me like getting my camera out and trying to, you know, essentially do some cooking in the kitchen on camera, which I'm not super wild about. But if you want that, let me know because there are some carnivore condiments you can make yourself that are just fine. Some of them very easy. Red number three and red number 40. Look for those. If you're insisting on buying yourself the occasional condiment for a treat, look for those. Look to see if like Primal Kitchen tends to be something carnivores love. If they're having, you know, splurging, they want to have a little steak sauce with their steak or something. Look at theirs to see if they put them in there. I don't think they do because I'm pretty sure they make a very clean product line. But still, take a look at the label. Always take a look at the label. Number seven, it's called azetacarbonamide. Put that one on the screen. <laughs> a common ingredient in basically mass-produced bread products. This stuff is a whitening agent in flour, and it makes bread more elastic. The bread, if you're a regular viewer of mine, it's probably been a while since you've eaten bread, but bread is, that you find in the store now is nothing like the bread our ancestors ate, you know, before processed foods. Bread was not super pillowy and super almost, you know, almost rubbery. It was, it was different. (laughs) You can, there are bakeries that will sell you bread that is much more like what our ancestors ate in the Middle Ages, the Great Plains of Europe, or if you come from a, if you're a person of an ethnicity from a more traditional bread eating background, the stuff you see at the store now is nothing like that. And this is a so- essentially a softening agent. It's been linked in some studies to lung and blood cancer in mice and apparently to similar outcomes in human beings. So please read your labels. If you're eating keto bread, I don't know why you would do that, honestly. But if you are eating keto bread, please look for that ingredient. Next one is sodium phosphate. It's an additive that keeps meat moist and tender during storage. This is why a lot of times you see people say not to eat processed meats is because of this ingredient. Um, this is also a good reason to go and make your own bacon or to make or to buy like the kind of bacon, like organic bacon, pay a little extra for your package of bacon. Because when you open it, like good high quality bacon that you buy from the store, if you when you open it, it starts to turn within a few days. It's also why they sell in small packages. It's also more expensive. Another cooking video I want to make is to show you how to make your own bacon from pork belly because you can find pork belly at a butcher shop or some grocery stores. And it's not that hard to make if you have a way to smoke the pork belly. Sodium phosphate is easily absorbed by the body and and according to most studies, increases the risk of high blood pressure and heart disease. And it's also linked to kidney disease, weaker bones, and uh, just premature death in general, which is always fun. And the last one is probably something you're only going to have if you're drinking diet soda, and that's caramel coloring. Although this will also sometimes show up in condiments again and in barbecue rubs and things. Caramel coloring. It's made by combining sugar with ammonia, of all things. Now think about that. Like we don't generally eat ammonia, but that's how they get it. It is apparently, virtually every study on this has been shown that it's linked to causing cancer in animals and likely as a result does the same to human beings. Again, that's what happens with the diet sodas, soft drinks, bottled coffees, all those sorts of things. So please, if you take anything away from this, read the labels of anything that you buy that is processed. I've seen caramel coloring in meat sticks before. Why is it there? It's meat. It doesn't need the help. (laughs) It's already got a a meat-like color. You don't need to add caramel coloring. But I've seen it. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. What else have you seen? 
what other artificial ingredients would you tell people to avoid if they're going to eat the occasional processed thing, say they're driving somewhere and they need a snack? What other things would you tell them to avoid besides, you know, basic things like various kinds of sugar? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Share this on social media if you can. That helps a lot as well. I'm Anthony Stein, The Practical Carnivore. Thanks for your time.